Okay, on this problem it says, how much money would you need to deposit so you end up with $700 after four years and the uh, interest is compounded quarterly at a rate of 7.5%? Okay, um, to do this problem on Excel, we would just put our data into the banking sheet, and I'll show you that. I'm on the bank sheet, and we're interested in how much do you need to deposit your principal. So I'm on this area right here, finding the principal. It also said that it was compounded quarterly, so I'm using this this side of the sheet. And the amount that you want to end up with is $700. The interest rate was 7.5% uh, or 0 .075 as a decimal, compounded quarterly, so that's four. And for four years, and right here it tells you the amount of money that you would need to deposit. So uh, let's also check this, uh, how you would do this problem by hand. To do it by hand, we would have to substitute these values in of 0.075 the uh, 4 n for there for the n and it's raised to the nt well that's 4 times the t is 4 for 4 years and we have to solve it for p so what you would do is divide both sides by this hunk of stuff right here we'd have to take 700 divided by this quantity raised to the 16th power and you'll get the principal okay <clears throat> let's go ahead and do this one it says if your money is compounded monthly what interest rate would you need to receive so that your money doubles in seven years? Okay, so that your money doubles in seven years. Okay, again, we need to use this uh, same formula right here, A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. Now, if you want your uh, money to double, the interest rate that you need for $1 to double to $2 is the same interest rate that you need for $100 or $1 million to double to $2 million or $100 to double to $200. So really, it doesn't matter how much you start with, just so you end up with twice that amount. So what we can do is think of the amount that you end up with being twice the principal. So I'm just going to substitute in 2P where the A is. So this gives me 2P equals P times 1 plus R over 12. That's because it's compounded monthly on this problem, monthly. And uh, the 84 comes from taking the N times the T. It's 12 monthly for seven years, and seven times 12 is 84. Now, what I can do at this point is divide both sides by the P, and that eliminates the P, and I'm just down to this equation right here. Now, I need to get R, and I need to get rid of this 84th power. So to get rid of the 84th power, take the 84th root of both sides. Well, the 84th root cancels out the 84th power, so I end up with the 84th root of 2 is equal to 1 plus r over 12. The 84th power is gone. Now I just subtract 1 and then finally get rid of the divide by 12 by multiplying by 12. Now you could do this on a calculator, a good calculator. You probably would want to do the inside first, take 2 and raise it to the 184th power, putting the 184th in parentheses, subtract 1 from that answer, and then multiply by 12. Now the easier way to do this is, uh, is to use the Excel sheet. And we're finding out the interest rate and what interest rate would you need for your money to double in seven years compounded monthly. So let's go ahead and do that a second. I would, it's compounded in some sort of discrete way. So I would be using this section of the sheet and we're finding the interest rate. So whatever amount you put here for the principal, put twice that amount right there. Now it's compounded monthly, so the N would be 12, and it was for seven years, and I get the exact same answer right here, 0 0.099. So your interest rate would need to be a 9.94% interest rate, or this is your answer as a decimal. Now real quick, I wanted to show you what this sheet looks like when you zoom out here a little bit. Uh, this sheet has all this area, let me get it here, all this area on the left-hand side is for any time your money is compounded in some discrete way like uh, annually, quarterly, monthly, or daily. And over here is the same four things, finding the amount, finding the principal, finding the rate, or finding the time, the amount of years, um, if your money is compounded continuously. Now other things that are on this sheet that you might find interesting are here's where you can calculate a monthly mortgage payment. Here's uh, where you can find out uh, the remaining balance of a uh, loan. And here's uh, 
the, uh, the annuity with a regular deposit of P dollars. In other words, you keep on adding money to this. This is a real useful formula, like you're making regular deposits to a, uh, to a, a, a retirement fund, and you could say how much money will you end up with if you put $200 in at 8% monthly for 30 years. And see, you're getting interest all the time, not only on the money that you put in, but also on the interest that you're putting in. So this is a continuous deposit of $200 every month compared to the problems that we are doing in this class up here where it's one lump sum. And here you uh, put in the amount that you want to end up with, and it will calculate what your monthly deposit needs to be, or yearly or weekly, however you want to calculate it. And here's the amount of time you can figure that out. Also, on the right-hand side of the sheet, I have an amortization schedule made up. Let's say, for example, you have a monthly mortgage and you found out uh, how much your payment is. Well, you can put in your monthly payment. And again, you can find out your monthly payment over here on this side. And then once you figure that out, you can uh, uh, put in that monthly payment or you can put in any payment you like, the number of years of the loan and so on. And what it does, it tells you how much each month is going to uh, interest and how much is going to principal for that period of time. So that you might find useful. Okay, well, let's see what else we got here. Um, that takes us to our next problem right here, which says, what quarterly interest rate would you need to receive to be better off than an annual interest rate of 6%? Okay, with these type of problems, it doesn't really matter how much money you're talking about or over how much time, because the same amount of money, uh, to be fair, you know, we need to compare these same sort of things. We need to compare the same amount of money over the same amount of time to see what quarterly interest rate would you need to receive to be better off than an annual interest rate. So what I do is I just compare, let's say, a dollar at 6% compounded annually for one year. So I put that into the uh, uh, one side of the sheet, and I get the amount that I need to end up with. Now, right below that, I'll show you what I'm talking about on the sheet. Right here, I put in the, the uh, different values to uh, the $1 at an interest rate. I think it was 6%. And uh, let me get that there, 6% uh, compounded annually for one year. And there I get that. Now, I put that same amount, 1.06, and don't round anything. If it's a lot more than that, then leave it all in there. And uh, what I'm trying to do is figure out the interest rate I would need if it was compounded. I think it said quarterly. So uh, I'll put four right here, and I've got to have the same amount. So you've got to have the same P&T in both places. So $1 for one year, and so that's equal to an interest rate of 6% compounded annually is equal to an interest rate of 5.86 or 5.87 compounded quarterly. And that's how you do those type of problems. And we'll stop there.